Hello there, this is Hans Forschner with Navcon Engineering. Thank you for your interest in the SoundPlan software. In this video, I would like to go over the Google Maps and the OpenStreetMap import capabilities in SoundPlan. How to set it up and um, what it really means and um, also some of the uh, pros and cons. So the prerequisite for using this Google Maps and MapQuest aerial view import or elevation import is the cartography module. If you want to add the OpenStreetMap import, uh, you also require not only the cartography module, but also the GIS interface module. To communicate with Google Maps and MapQuest, you don't only use the um, or require the modules, you also need to set up a user account with Google or Gmail or MapQuest. For the Google account, uh, certain APIs, that's application programming interface need to be enabled. So I'll go over that, uh, which APIs you need to turn on. For the Google account, you also need a credit card uh, to use uh, or set up the user account. For the typical SoundPlan user, the usage of Google Maps, downloads of aerials and all that really has no cost as associated to it, unless you increase your charging more than $200 worth of uh, downloads, um, which is equivalent to uh, 10,000 images in a month or a thousand address lookups or 10,000 elevation calls in a month. So if you're over those, then at some point uh, and it adds up to more than $200 worth of calls or usage, then uh, Google will charge you. As far as MapQuest, I don't think there's any um, requirements in terms of credit card or cost up uh, the geo database and here we have a century city um, situation that I set up I open up uh, that situation and at this point there's nothing in the situation so I'll go to fundamentals and go to connect OSM and Google Maps uh, there's a hotkey shift control O works the same way and it opens up the Google Maps uh, services. So there's a separate window that you have here. And uh, if you have one or two windows, you can have it on a, or screens, you can have this window on a second screen if you'd like. So here we um, put in uh, the address, Cent uh, Century City, California, and United States. I hit enter and this will open up uh, the right address. So here in this case, Century City. And so here we have like Santa Monica Boulevard. Um, there's like Beverly Hills High School. And so first of all, here we can turn on uh, the points of interest and turn them off. So that's kind of what the API point of interest is doing or places is doing. At this point, I want to save this aerial photo. And uh, to do that, um, I can go save map viewport as, or we could also just go get image. And then if it's get image, it automatically will go to a default name. I typically don't like to just get the default name because it would overwrite it every time I pull an aerial photo. So I'll go save map uh, viewport. I'll give it a name. So here, Century City. You can uh, give it uh, different formats, let's say a JPEG file. And so it just imported that JPEG file. If you want to look for it, here we can see it. So here's the JPEG file. Let me go back. And then the next step is I want to import uh, the elevation data. So I'll just click here on the import elevation data. And here we can also get already a preview of how, like, how many points it will import, 127 by 64. So this is about 6,400 uh, uh, points approximately, maybe a little bit more. And um, so it will import that. And so it just did that. So here we have now all the points. Let me turn the aerial photo off. So here we have all the spot elevation that are imported. At this point, I will create a digital ground model. DGM 
Century City. Stop this. And we can take a look at the 3D view of the topography. Um, on the topography, I want to note this is always uh, in terms of Google Earth or Google Maps data. It's always based on a 90 meter grid worldwide. In some areas, Google Earth has more detailed information. They, it doesn't really reveal where it has more detailed information. You may just see in the, um, the information that you're importing that it may have a, a finer grid. Uh, so Google is not really um, kind of disclosing that. Uh, that's maybe the downside of using a free uh, service. If you are um, interested in more detailed information, there are online services where you can import or buy uh, topo data in 5 meter, 10 meter, or 1 meter grid. Of course, that's not uh, for free, uh, but the data is available. So again, uh, we imported that. We triangulized the elevation data. And uh, the next thing I would like to uh, import here, so let me go back to the online uh, map services. I would like to import uh, the OpenStreetMap data. Um, so this is a direct import, but you could also go to openstreetmap.com or .org and uh, select that area and save uh, the OpenStreetMap data into an XML file. And then under the file import uh, XML or OpenStreetMap, uh, you could go uh, uh, also a different route. So here we have a direct route uh, directly here with a download and import. I select that. And at this point, I'm only interested in the road and buildings. I'll import that. And here we have the import. So let me, at this point, uh, let me minimize that again. So here we have all these buildings, uh, these high-rise buildings, uh, and the topo data and the roads imported. Now, uh, one thing I want to note here, um, the elevations of the buildings and the roads are zero. So if we look at that information here now in the 3D view, yeah, you can see that uh, the information is, is not there. So we need to select the buildings. Again, view, current object type, select the buildings. We can select them all and uh, drop them onto the ground. Maximum terrain height, so set objects on the DGM. And then we also do that maybe for the roads. Um, the road input here, uh, because this is in the US, uh, would be using the traffic noise model. The road data is really not in the right format uh, to use it here. Uh, so I typically use the road information from a standpoint of display purposes and uh, digitize my uh, individual lanes for the roads separately. Uh, or use some of the data and uh, basically copy and paste and make parallel roads. Um, so just something to uh, to mention here. So I'll drop that also on the DGM. Okay, and now you can see that all the data is now within the ground model area. Uh, looks more consistent. All right, and then of course outside the area, the uh, out of side outside of the digital ground model, the uh, roads, they drop down, and then also some of the buildings are dropped off the cliff, so to speak. All right, so um, one thing to note, these two triangular buildings, uh, which are yeah, kind of like an icon here in this area, um, are not in the OpenStreetMap data. So please check uh, when you import data that at least the buildings that are most of interest to you that they are actually were imported in the um, in the OSM import. If they are missing like uh, these two here, then uh, you end up digitizing them manually. 
So here I'll digitize it at the top. So this is my first, this is a building that is a, a, probably like 124 meters in height. And we could just go around it. And now here, this building, because of the um, kind of the shifting that we are getting or the, um, the skew that we are getting due to the um, image, um, I typically digitize it at the top and then move it down so that the bottom coordinates are closer to where the actual coordinates of the buildings are. hope that makes sense. Uh, so we can use this one. And then, of course, uh, we can rotate that for the other one. And now we can uh, take a look at that. And so here we have the two buildings. All right. Um, so let me go back to the uh, online map uh, setup. So here, you can notice here at the very top right, uh, that's something that you need to set up before you can use any of these um, features of importing aerial photos or importing the open street map data or the elevation data. So let me open up the setup API key. So here are my two API keys. I have will have them blacked out. Uh, so these are, um, yeah, like a code of uh, 50 or 60 characters. There's one also for MapQuest credential and Google credential. Now to get those, I uh, let me open up my Google uh, account in the browser. And um, so this will automatically get me, um, I already logged in earlier, so to the, my credentials. So here again, I'm looking at the uh, API services in my Google account. So here I, I set up my um, API key. And with that, I'm getting a certain code. So this is kind of where you can copy that key and then copy it into the sound plan um, setup. And then, so that's one step that you need to do. And then the second step is you need to go to the API libraries, find the map APIs. And here we need to turn on several APIs so for example, the geocoding, that's converting addresses to geographic coordinates. The elevation APIs, that will uh, give you the uh, feature to import elevation data with Google Maps. Then we have the Maps JavaScript API. This will, this feature is actually allowing you to import the aerial picture. And then we have uh, places and the uh, Places is uh, basically the information of about 100 million places around the globe. So that basically puts the tags on different locations on the uh, map that you're looking at. So these are the, um, let's see, these are all the, the maps that you need. Uh, so we have um, the geocoding, the places, the uh, JavaScript. And um, so those are the minimal APIs that need to be turned on. In terms of the uh, Google, uh, the MapQuest, um, you basically just open that link for the MapQuest developer. You sign up and, um, and log in. And then uh, you just uh, look for manage keys or create API key. And uh, again, copy and paste that and paste that into your online map data settings. Finally, here where there are some advanced options and these advanced option basically allows you to select if you want to use the uh, geocoding from Google Maps or the geocoding from MapQuest. So that is again the importing of uh, topographical information. In some cases, MapQuest has a uh, more detailed uh, data. Uh, so they, I want to refer to the manual on that. Uh, Soundplan did some comparison. So in some cases, Google Map Quest actually has better topo data than uh, Google Maps. Um, the second thing here is the number of calls. So you can, um, every call at a minimum is uh, 512 points, I believe. And so here we can uh, set up how many calls you automatically do with every uh, click of the button. 
So typically the default is eight calls. Uh, I have it set up to 16 or 24, and uh, so it automatically imports more elevation data. And I believe that concludes my um, intro video on setting up the API for uh, SoundPlan in the GeoDatabase. Um, if you have any questions, uh, yeah, put it in the comments and I'll see if I can uh, respond to them. Thank you and uh, have a good day.